before you jump into the video, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. All right, guys, what's going on? Arid Lords here in uh, some fancy attire. Um, I, guess it, I guess it kind of fits the uh, event. Um, Although a lot of the gaming presenters were kind of more casually dressed on stage. Um, this is just because, you know, I'm doing work-related stuff. And um, I had some I had a chance to make a video here uh, for something more gaming-related. Uh, I'm going to take myself out of the realm of The Walking Dead and all of the uh, ridiculous news that's been coming out of that franchise on AMC. Because it seems to be one giant catastrophe bomb after another. And uh, I'd like to move on to... Uh, gaming here and actually talk about some of the games that I'm excited for that were announced by E3. Um, <clears throat> I gotta say, like, I'm just gonna say right now, like, Bethesda definitely for me had, like, the best press conference. Um, just in terms of humor, in terms of games that were announced, there was, um, there was just a lot. There was a lot out of this press conference and... I'm I'm excited because they seem to be they they seem to be immersing um, the gamer in <clears throat> 700 different ways with sequels. So there's Rage Two was announced. You got Fallout 76, which is like basically an online Fallout mode. I've been waiting for years for something like that, so that's awesome. I believe it uses the Fallout 4 game engine. You can still play it single player, so you can still play it the way you want. Like you don't, it is. It's not like some MMO where you have to like always be playing with people. But I'd say it's kind of like Destiny a little bit, where you jump in with people and you cooperatively work together to complete certain areas. It was revealed that it's four times bigger than the maps of Fallout Four, which is pretty incredible. Um, so it, and it looks, it just looks like a polished game. I mean, again, using the the game engine of Fallout Four, will it have bugs? Okay, probably. Uh, but it comes out this November. I'm not sure if Todd Howard announced a beta or something for it, but we'll have to see. Um, so that was announced. And then Rage 2, I mean, one of the the first Rage came out. The first Rage was like 2010, 2011. Uh, and this game, it had some cool features. I mean, some you know, jetpacking, you know, electrokinesis and all of these uh, crazy weapon powers. I mean, back in the Arid Lands. And um, for anyone who played the first uh, Rage game... Um, it's, it's nice to see a return to this franchise. It really is. Um, after all that time. Um, uh, and then they had, they had this funny spoof where they actually joked about the fact that every year they seem to announce another platform that Skyrim's coming out on. So, <clears throat> Skyrim, they, I don't know if there's any console they haven't ported it to, but they had this funny skit of Jordan Peele where he was joking that it was going to be on the uh, Amazon Alexa, and my Alexa's turned off, so it wasn't going to trigger it, because <laughs> that would have been intrusive. Um, but, um, yeah, it was a pretty funny skit, um, just to splice it up, splice up some humor. Uh, they had, like, a free mobile game for Elder Scrolls, and everyone there was waiting for the Elder Scrolls Six announcement, and I, I did not think they were going to. I was like, all right, they... They're announcing, especially when they announced Starfield, like that, there was a big rumor that there was this new franchise, this new game that they were working on. I don't know if it's an RPG, what it is really, uh, but Starfield, you see like this satellite rotating around a planet and then it just gives you the big logo, really that much. Uh, and then, so the press conference is about to end and he's like, oh, Starfield, you know, this game's going to be amazing. It's something new. It's not Fallout. It's not Elder Scrolls. It's something new. Um, and then he says... And then we're going to show you the game that we're working on after that. And it's the game you've all been asking for. And I'm like, wait a minute. Are they really? And then sure enough, you get the that Skyrim soundtrack. The dun 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 Like that. And it's over these rolling hills. And then it has the Elder Scrolls 6. It's, it's a tw like a 23 second trailer. It shows nothing other than like like a misty field. And then like the air, these, uh, these grassy fields and mountain plains by a coastal land. Uh, Landmass. So... Other than, like, a snippet of a location, like, that was it. They didn't show anything else from The Elder Scrolls Six, And, I, like, I'm looking forward to The Elder Scrolls Six because it's probably going to incorporate the voice communications that Fallout 4 had. Like, you know how Fallout 4 had the... Your character could, like, speak? Because in Fallout 3 in Vegas, you just clicked on options from a dialogue tree and your, your, your character didn't have a voice. The only time he had a voice was when he was being shot at or, you know, breaking his legs. And it was just, ooh, uh, like, sound effects. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but in Fallout 4, there's an entire dialogue tree for your character. Um, some people criticized it and said it was limited because you can either ask questions, get angry, be compliant, or kind of be in the middle. Um, and they weren't as diverse as some of the, the branch trees of previous Fallout games. Um, and, you know, there were some complaints about Fallout 4. The story was great, but I don't think people liked that it was so linear. I think people liked that there was choices uh, in the game and many different ways for you to complete quests and not just have to team up with, you know, one cast of characters. Like, when you start up Fallout 4, you instantly are led down the path of joining the Minutemen. Like, you, like the Raiders are automatically bad, you have to join the Minutemen, and there's this, there's just, like, the, the, the course is very linear that you take. Obviously, you can join the different factions, the Railroad, the Institute, um, the Brotherhood, and then, what the heck's the other one? I guess the, the Minutemen. I mean, they're kind of neutral, but, um... So, I don't. Th I think people wanted more choice, but I, I'm interested to see how how the Elder Scrolls Six. It doesn't really have a name because Elder Scrolls Four was called Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion, then Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim, and there was no title. It just said the Elder Scrolls Six. So, um, I guess we're gonna wait and see whenever they announce what that is. Uh, way back on my, I mean, we're talking like 2011 when this game came out. I actually have a full playthrough of this, of Skyrim on my YouTube channel. That was back when I did game playthroughs all the time. Um, and I did that, I actually have playthroughs of the two DLCs, uh, the Vampire Werewolf one, and then the, the, the Dragonborn one, where you have to face the first Dragonborn, um, uh, those were, like, the two main story ones, then there was also one that offered, like, you could, build, you could add additions to your house in, like, Hearthstone, Hearthfire, and, in Whiterun, uh, but it, there was no story content, really, with that, but, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how the game looks on this new, I don't know if it's gonna be, cause he was talking about, like, the next generation, I'm like, are we talking, like, PS5 and, like, Xbox... I don't even know what the fuck they call it. Xbox 200 to Infinity. I, I originally thought the Xbox One was going to be called Xbox Infinity, just so you know. I, Xbox One, I still think, is a stupid name. It's stuck because this console's been out for, like, five, six years, but I still think it was a poor decision. Um, that's just a one-off from me. Um... That actually kind of brings me into my next point, that PlayStation, I mean, is just crushing it. The number of exclusives that they've had out, like, they dwarf everything that my Microsoft is doing. Like, what does Microsoft have other than Halo and Gears of War? I'm going to say that right now, because the only things I saw, the only game I'm kind of interested in that is an exclusive is Crackdown 3. They announced T T Devil May Cry 5, which, okay, you know, th th that's a decent series. Um, but there's no release date on these. They're, like, to be determined 2019. And that was, like, Phil Spencer's favorite word of the press conference. Like, oh, coming soon, or in the future. Like, he could, he could, there was no projection for this fall. Like, when any of these games would be coming out. Um, meanwhile, with PlayStation, so far, you've had God of War, which I still have to upload my game review of God of War. I, I made a big, giant game review. I'm, I gotta put it up on YouTube for you guys. Um, you had God of War, um, you have the new Spider-Man game coming out from Insomniac, the people who made Ratchet and Clank, um, you had Days Gone By, which I believe is coming out 2019, I think, um, then you had, you had other games here, you had, well, I don't know if they're coming out, it says to, the, the release date's still to, to be determined, so Death Stranding, which is Kojima's super weird video game with Norman Reedus. Um, they showed gameplay, and it only confused me more. Like, the the trailer was like a, like a cinematic marvel, as Kojima likes to do these big cinematic showcasings. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it incorporates babies, and you have, like, this, like, sci-fi technology, and there's, like, these demon monsters. It looks really, really weird. Um, it literally looks like people are eating babies and using their energy to power suits. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know what the heck this game is about, but it's a, P it's a PS4 exclusive nonetheless. Um, Naughty Dog, obviously one of my favorite developers, making The Last of Us 2. I've been waiting for a Jack and Daxter sequel for freaking years, and it seems like they just don't want to go back to the franchise. Which, at this point, I've kind of accepted that. Like, you know, Jack 3 came out in 2004, Jack X Combat Racing came out in 2005... They had the HD collection in 2012, and then the, it came out on PS4, and, and it, you know, it's been ported to every console for PlayStation, the Vita, um, but at this point, I just, I don't think so. I mean, they went, they made a fourth game in the Uncharted series, um, but they weren't willing to do it with Jack, and now they've gone on to this, a second game for The Last of Us, so, 
I don't know. After The Last of Us 2, will... I mean, because Uncharted series is over, so do you think Naughty Dog... I mean, honestly, in my opinion, I think Naughty Dog is going to move on to a new IP, a new franchise. I think they're going to do that. Once The Last of Us 2 comes out, I think that they're going to just move on to a new franchise. Um, that is just my opinion. I un It's, you know, unfortunate. But The Last of Us 2 looks amazing, of course. Um, the trailer was very uh, disorienting in the fact that you have... Uh, Ellie at this dance um, with her girlfriend and then it changes to a scene of her in the woods fighting a bunch of raiders and then it transitions to her at the dance so uh, and she's older she's a teenager um, I played the first last of us I absolutely loved it I have a full playthrough of that on my channel I will plug that uh, because I, that game was incredible it had, I, I remember a lot of people tuned in for that too it was just such a big game a big release at the time um and then we have Resident Evil 2, which is a remake. Um, let's see. Ghost of Tsushima. That's another one. Ghost of Tsushima. That's also PS4 exclusive. Spider-Man. Um, kind of looking at the other... Um, kind of trying to look at some of the other uh, things here. Uh... They had a, re a gameplay reveal of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That looked really cool. That's going to be in Greek Greek times, which is weird because that would mean it has to be set before the events of Origins. Because Origins was in Egypt during the time of Cleopatra. And if, the, if this game Odyssey is in the time of the Greeks, and you're talking to Socrates and Plato, like they came before all of that. So this is before the... Because the Assassin's Creed era and the order of the Assassins... What we now know was created via the the Magi of Egypt. Their order evolved into the assassins because they were fighting against the tyrannical regimes of um, Cleopatra and uh, the kings. And it started with a revenge quest from Bayek. But the story was pretty good of that game, I will say. Um, Beyond Good and Evil 2, um, The Division 2. Um, I'm going into games that are... Uh, not really, um, yeah, let me see here, Starlink, Battle for Atlas featuring Star Fox, uh, Nintendo games, I don't own a Switch, but, um, let's see, uh, da, 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 yeah, the Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, uh, is a real game that's coming out in the future, we'll just... Yeah, yeah, again, there's not much... So, Star, again, Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six, like, they were announced by Bethesda, but there's, like, no information for them. I, you know, but it's it's good that they, they didn't leave that out. Like, they had an update to it. Um, oh, Doom, I forgot about that. Yeah, Doom Eternal. So that was another sequel. So Fallout 76, Doom Eternal, Rage 2, Starfield, and Elder Scrolls Six. Like, all of those games were discussed in this press conference. So that's, like, five, six games... That Bethesda, just Bethesda revealed in their press conference. And then some of the subsequent um, press conferences talked about it. Um, like Fallout 76, I think it was in the Xbox press conference we saw some of this. Um, yeah, so Fallout 76 is like a Fallout MMO. It's it's this is, it's really cool though. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I am. Um, and then Wolfenstein 2. Yeah, Wolfenstein Youngblood. That's another, oh my god. Yeah, this was a nuts. Yes, so six games. Wolfenstein Youngblood was also announced by Bethesda. Yeah, wow, Bethesda is really getting active. Um, and then this game was super, super anticipated. Um, because it came, it's co it's coming from the people that made The Witcher Three, uh, CD Projekt Red. Um, who actually, I, I got to meet that team. When I went to E3 2013, I got to meet the team that made that game. Um, I believe I still have a video up on my YouTube channel. There should be a playlist for my E3 2013 footage where I had my camera. Um, if you guys, you, you can go check that out. Because, I mean, I did go to E3 once. Um, I've only been once. I went the year when the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were announced. That was all. That was the year with all the drama when people didn't know if Xbox One was always online. And, you know, the PS4 and the used games and... So it was a big year. That was a big year to be at E3. Um, um, so, so yeah, Cyberpunk 2077. Um, it was really anticipated. 
Um, and unlike the one that came out five years ago, this was actually on my game assets. Future Dystopia. Tabletop RPG source material is set. It's a city of brilliant technology. Um, <clears throat> so... So is this game basically like The Witcher in the future? Is Cyberpunk 2077 basically the open world RPG style of The Witcher, but instead of uh, medieval and sorcery magic, it's now um, technology and um, cyberpunkness? Like, you know how, I mean, like with Bethesda, like they have um, the Elder Scrolls as their medieval sword slashing uh, ancient mythology kind of game, but then they have Fallout, which is into the science fiction and the post-apocalyptic, you know, laser rifles and stuff like that. So, is this kind of the direction that CD Projekt? I mean, they deserve it because Witcher Three was such a great game. It got raving reviews in 2015. It has been three years, same period of time. So it's kind of funny. So 2015, The Witcher Three comes out, Fallout Four comes out, and now there's these big time gaps, and now you have these new games coming out, which is pretty interesting. Um, Babylon's Fall. This game is only on PC and PS4. <clears throat> and then you have um, Halo Infinite. Take a sip here. Um, yeah, Halo Infinite. Halo is a game. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um... I don't know if Halo Infinite is an MMO. Like, is is Halo Infinite to the Halo franchise what Fallout 76 is to the Fallout franchise? Like, is this some sort of MMO thing? But, I mean, Halo's already already had an online component for years. That's what it's known for. Um, I gotta do more digging into Halo Infinite. Because I don't know if it's Halo 6 or if it's just a game that's a placeholder until Halo 6. Because once you do Halo 6, you're concluding the the... the the trilogy or the Halo series that could potentially be the last Halo game and of course it's Microsoft's cash cow even though I don't know how people keep buying it because it's such a tired franchise um then Gears of War 5 here's another so Xbox of course you know again Gears of War and Halo they, they're, they're tiring out these franchises that I, I was done with these franchises a long time ago like I got Halo 5 and I was I, I didn't like the game that much I thought the story was awful I didn't really like the co-op system uh, you fight the same boss like 400 times. The story is short. There was no split screen. I just wasn't a fan of the multiplayer. I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't a fan of the game. Like, some of the multiplayer gameplay was okay. I just wasn't a fan of it. I actually ended up trading it in. I just never really played it. Um, I just didn't feel like it was worth my time at all. Um, so, you know, you have that. Um, oh, wait a minute. Devil May Cry 5 isn't an exclusive. It says here that it's going to be on PS4. Really? Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. It's, yeah, it's on PS4. I had no idea about that. So I thought this game was exclusive to X... Wow. What games does Xbox have that are exclusive? Oh, here's another game that came... Just Cause 4? Oh my god, I can't wait to play this. I don't know if I... I did take some footage of Just Cause 3 a few years ago when it came out. Because I did, like, everything in that game. I love the freak... The grapple hook is such a, it's a good, it's such a goofy function. And now you're playing... Yep, Rico again. You're playing as freaking Rico again. This is gonna be funny. Dying Light 2. I didn't play the original Dying Light. I really should. Um, I watched a friend play. It looked pretty cool. So, Dying Light 2. Ah... Uh... Kingdom Hearts 3, this is a big one. Um, fans have been waiting a long time for... Yeah, yeah, probably as long as I've been waiting for freaking Jack and Daxter. Um, it's set for a 2018 release date, even though I, th I believe that they'll push it to 2019. That's just my prediction. Um, yeah, and then here's one of Microsoft's exclusives for this fall. Forts of Horizon 4, a racing game, which PlayStation has plenty of, and Xbox has plenty of, I, again, no matter how slick the graphics look and how many freaking tires of your car you can change and different car variations, it's always just going to be a racing game. So, 
I mean, you know, I remember at E3 2013 when they tried to hype up Forza as a launch title for the Xbox, and I, I just shrugged and said, it's a racing game. The next five titles after that will be racing games too. So, what the heck does Xbox... This, is, I, like, this was a point I was trying to make in my video. Like, there are so many games here I'm excited for. I just, like, I'm going off of Games Raiders uh, listing, because, you know, obviously I don't... I only remember, like, the big ones in my head. But Xbox is in trouble, man. Like, I don't know what the heck they're doing. Like... Other than Halo Infinite in Gears of War 5, and then Devil May Cry 5 is not an exclusive, as I just found out, and then, I, so Crackdown 3, so was there Crackdown 3 footage? Because I've been waiting for that game, actually. Even though I'm, like, on the verge of selling my freaking thing. Microsoft on Crackdown 3 delay. We want it to sit next to Halo in Gears. So the game's been delayed. This game was announced at E3 2013, mind you. It's been a long time since this game came out. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I would be pissed off if I was... So yeah, it's ridiculous. So like... I don't know. Like, Xbox... Like, even the exclusives that they have, we don't even know when they're coming out. We don't even know when they're coming out. When, like it says, release date. Like, we don't even know when this game's coming out. Gears of War 5, 2019. Halo Infinite, to, to be determined. Meanwhile, PlayStation has had... God of War, like, broke sales records a, mo a month ago. Like, that game is just destroying everything. And then you got the Spider-Man game, like I mentioned. I, I just don't see... Not only that, in terms of Call of Duty, you get all of the map packs first on PlayStation 4. So even if, like, oh, well, I like first-person shooters and, you know, I want to be on the, the dominant console, PlayStation 4 is the dominant console because you get all the map packs first. So if you want to... If you're, like, a YouTuber or you want to play... If you just want to play stuff first, you get that exclusivity with PlayStation because Call of Duty just said, oh, crap, PlayStation's the better-selling console... More of our players are on that. Our business dealings need to be with PlayStation. That's exactly what they did. I can't believe this. I don't understand how Microsoft is getting away with it. I, I don't know how someone, Phil Spencer and his gaming division, haven't been like just reamed because, of course, they've had all the iterations, Xbox One X, and they, you know, they downgrade like the, the 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 price of the Xbox One, the original, is super cheap now. It's like two thirty to two hundred thirty dollars or something. It's very cheap. But, like, what, what do I get out of that console? Like, I hate the interface of it, first of all. I'd much rather prefer PlayStation 4's interface. Even though the PlayStation 4 can be slow, Xbox One is way slower, just in my opinion, with its interface. Um, and there's just so many more exclusives. Like, I, like, dude, this, like, I don't have it here, but... Um, God of War was, was one of my favorite games of the year so far. And it might win Game of the Year. It was, it was in, in, incredible. It took a lot of beats and cues from The Last of Us, which again, I say this in my review, so I don't want to go too deep. But um, I, I don't see how, like every single year, PlayStation has a new exclusive something different. Whether it's Kojima's games with that really weird game with Norman Reedus, uh, or it's the zombie game with Days Gone By, or it's a suit, like if you're into Marvel and superhero comics, you got Spider-Man, or if you want something from the good old classic developers like Naughty Dog, you got The Last of Us 2. And then, you know, a franchise that's been a long... You know, I've been waiting for God of War for a while. Well, here's God of War 4. Like, <laughs> I, I can't... I just can't believe that... Uh, like, the, I, I don't know what the heck... Xbox One offers me. What does the system offer me? Because everything else I can get in all the other systems. Like, I, I'm being honest here. Like, I, I don't see... Like, please tell me, guys. Be, like, what is your uh, opinion on this? Babylon's Fall. Platinum Games. Yeah. Oh, another game that came out this year that's PS4 exclusive. That Detroit Human game. I haven't even picked that game up. That's another game that just came out. Dude, like, I, I gotta do a search. I've gotta do a search right now.
to, to end the video here, Xbox One exclusives 2018 list. Why would Spyro be for the Xbox? That's a place. That's another PlayStation exclusive. That came out on PlayStation. The Spyro, the Spyro collection. Yeah, and then of course, I mean, there was no Red Dead Two footage, but it's coming out later this year. Duh. Um, Metro Anthem is Anthem exclusive to Xbox. Anthem, no, no, it's not. Because Anthem was announced by EA, so it's, it, that's not exclusive. Oh, my God. I... What was those in articles? Yeah. They... F Yeah, Microsoft has effectively made its own console irrelevant because even with the window with the Windows Anywhere initiative, there's no particular reason for a dedicated to own an Xbox or have a PC. Yeah, so it's it's weird because Microsoft has Windows, and so like Windows is slowly creeping into the Xbox space. Like again, what the heck is the point of owning an Xbox One unless all your friends play Xbox One for some reason? Unless. Oh, I, 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 guys, I can't think of any PS4, uh, Xbox One exclusives off the top of my head. I really can't. Because whenever I think of Xbox One exclusives, what do you think of? You think of Gears of War and Halo. <laughs> and this website's taking forever to load. Um, Forza... I don't know, dude. I'm trying to look for information if there's any fucking exclusives that are worth a damn. State of Decay 2. That's one. That's not exclusive. Like, how about Metro Exodus? Is Metro Exodus on PS4? Because again, you cannot list games that are are. Yeah, Metro Exodus is on PlayStation 4. Again, like, oh my God, dude, what the heck reason is there to buy? So look at this article on TrustReviews.com. This guy lists games to get excited for for the Xbox One. Anthem, that's on PlayStation 4. Metro Exodus, that's on PlayStation 4. Red Dead 2, hell yes, that's on PlayStation 4. State of Decay 2, okay, I think that's exclusive to Xbox. Crackdown 3, yeah, that's exclusive to Xbox, but it's in development hell. Below, I, I haven't heard of that. Spyro, that's... Anyway, so, you know, those are all the games. There's so many games to be excited for. I'm very excited for the state of things to ahead. Um, I hope you guys are too. Um, I'm still a gamer. Like, even though I do Walking Dead content, I'm still a gamer by heart. And um, I'm looking forward to gaming this year. Like, I will probably be playing Fallout 4, or Fallout 4, Fallout 76 online. And um, I love history, so I'll check out the new Assassin's Creed. Um, you know, I don't really buy superhero games, but I, I, Ratchet and Clank series is near and dear to my heart from my childhood, so I'll give Insomniac a chance with Spider-Man. I still gotta pick up the new Detroit game. I mean, I just don't have as much time to game these days, but I mean, gaming, it's enticing me again, man. There's some big, big games coming out. Like, there was a little bit of a lull, maybe last year, but then they really revved up with this announcement of all these games coming out. So 2018, 2019 is gonna be a huge, huge year for games, so... You know, get ready. This is kind of a hype-up blog, And, um, you know, also, just me lamenting, like, rip Xbox users. Like, guys, like, I don't know how the heck you don't have a PlayStation 4. There's so many games you're missing out on. You, you really... Santa Monica Studios, 
Naughty Dog, Insomniac did go to Microsoft, and then their stupid game Fuse failed, and they said, well, screw this, and then they went back to PS4. So, like, all of these big developers, like, a lot of them are doing business just with PlayStation, because they, that's where the money's coming from, and they're making money, they're having, they're, they're, they're happy, and the relationship continues. I mean, millions of copies of God of War were sold, so why would, and it seems like they're going to make a sequel to that, so, like, why would they stop? Why would they suddenly want to put it on Xbox? So, there's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to. They, they gain everything by having it on exclusive console, so... So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, maybe talk a little bit, it's, it's weird to talk about the console wars, because so many systems have come out, Nintendo Switch, Steam, like, it's so diverse, but at this point, I do think PS4 is winning, there's no doubt, the system sold more and has more exclusives, so, anyway, thank you guys for watching, hope to see you for more vlogs in the future, peace out, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed.